Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're looking at the top players to target for the semi-final stage of Euro 2024, the Sun Dream Team fantasy football game. So we're going to start off by looking at the draw. Obviously not as many teams left now. So Spain versus France is the first fixture. Netherlands versus England is the second fixture on the Wednesday. So things to know for this round, five transfers again and then five transfers for the following round for the final. The deadline this week, so ahead of the Spain-France game, is Tuesday. So today, um, 7 p.m., one hour before the first kickoff. So we could potentially get lineups. There have been leaks coming out um, throughout the tournament beforehand. So you might possibly get something for Spain-France. Uh, but I wouldn't hold your hopes up too much because I just think that the nearer we get, surely the teams are going to try and keep their lineups under wrap. Uh, it's crunch time now. Um, Portugal, Germany, Turkey, Switzerland, all eliminated in the last round. Uh, so the first fixture, Spain versus France. I've just taken a few of the sort of um, bookies odds um, and predicted uh, results for these matches from various sites. So 11 of five. Uh, com, I think it is, 11of5.com. Let me just double check that. 11of5.com, yeah. They've been really helpful throughout the tournament to just get a sort of grasp on what's predicted to happen. It doesn't often pan out that way, but I find it's a little bit easier just to maybe back up what sort of ideas you have in your head. Spain are slight favourites over France, um, but the odds are pretty equal so it's down as being a spain 39 percent chance win france 37 percent chance win the draws 24 percent um, and then the clean sheet odds are 22 percent spain 21 percent france so basically nothing in it um personally if i had to guess i'm leaning towards france to win this one they just seem to keep finding a way they've been horrible to watch Really, really defensive. They've not got much going forward. They've got had no goals from open play, I saw. Um, and Bappe penalty and two own goals, I think it was. And they've still made it through to the semi-finals. Um, and then Spain have got a few players unavailable for this match. So I just have a feeling that France are going to sneak this one and it's going to be a tight match. But let me know what you're thinking on this Spain-France match. Um, but not much to, the, uh, to split it when it comes to the predicted results. Netherlands versus England on the Wednesday. Um, so England are the favourites, 44% chance um, down for winning. Clean sheet odds of 26%. And then Netherlands, 32% chance of winning. Uh, again, via 11 of fire. And then the clean sheet predicted uh, percentage is 19%. So England, bigger favourites than there is a favourite for the previous fixture. 44% chance of winning. Uh, 26% chance of a clean sheet. Netherlands, 32% and then 19% of a clean sheet. Um, the draw, again, is the same as the Spain-France one. 24% chance um, that that goes through to uh, extra time. And I guess potentially penalties. I think that's normal time draw. So England favourites. And I am actually feeling a bit more confident about England after that last match. Partly due to it being England improving a little bit, but also I thought Netherlands did give up quite a lot against uh, against Turkey. Turkey did have quite a few big chances in that game and Netherlands really did rescue it quite late in the match. So I think a little bit more confident about England, um, but we know in knockout football, anything can really happen. Um, Opta Analyst, I've been using that website as well for a bit of insight. They have France as the favourites for winning the whole thing at 30.4%, but then Spain, they've put them at 30.3%. So Spain, France, pretty much tied as the favourites to win the tournament now. England at 22.9% and Netherlands at 16.2%. So I'm thinking France, England for the final. Let me know what you're thinking. But we're going to come on now to top players to target from each of these fixtures. Please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, but let's carry on. Um, so obviously Spain, Germany finished 2-1 to Spain. Uh, that late goal for Marino winning the match. Um, and then 
you like me and you're back to the Spain defence, I had double defence in this one, you would not have been impressed. So they kept three clean sheets in a row before I decided to go for the double up. I went for Kukurea and Carvajal. And of course, they conceded an 89th minute goal to wipe the clean sheet out. Kukurea probably lucky not to give away a handball leading to a penalty. He came away with three bonus points, but Carvajal went and got himself a red card, which obviously horrible if you've got him, but I quite liked the sort of winning mentality to to bring down the Germany player right at the end and seal the win. So fair play to him, but you wouldn't have been impressed if you did have the Spain defence. Um, Spain conceded one goal in both of their last two matches, like I said, after three consecutive clean sheets. Um, but they're playing a France team that do seem fairly blunt. No open play goals, one penalty, two own goals. Um, the only thing that's making me feel a bit down about this Spain defence is the fact that they've got Carvajal now suspended. Le Normand, the centre-back, is also suspended for picking up a second yellow. And then Pedri is now also injured. But less concerned about that one because Danny Olmo has come in and done such a great job when he's been called upon. Um, Morata actually was down as being suspended on the Dream Team game, but he is not. That was a mistake. Um, they thought that, I think they said in the commentary that he was um, booked while on the bench after being substituted, but it turned out it wasn't him in the end. So Morata is fine for that next match. Um, like I said, so Olmo probably comes straight in for Pedri, I'd imagine, considering he's done so well. Goal, assist, 19 points in the last match. I think he's got possibly 11 points in the match before that as well. Um, he's done really well. Two goals, two assists in total. I imagine he comes in for Pedri. Unless they try and do something a bit more defensive, maybe have Ruiz as the um, sort of attacking midfielder and then go for like a Rodri, Mikel Marino double up. But I'm thinking it's going to be Olmo. And then in defence, they I'm guessing as well, Navas could come in for Carvajal at right back. We saw that in match day three against Albania. Um, and then Nacho can come in for Lenormand. Um, I think he's done that in a couple of the matches before. I think Grimaldo, uh, sorry, Nacho started the first fixture as well when Laporte wasn't there. So it seems like he's going to be the next guy to come in. I guess there's a possibility that they could switch the fullbacks. Kukurea maybe comes in at right back and Grimaldo gets to play. But yeah, I mean, it's guesswork. Unless we see the lineup, we don't know. But if I had to guess, I think it would be Navas probably does come in at right back, which doesn't fill me with confidence um, against Mbappe. But he is four, uh, he is 2.5 million, so a real bargain. Players to target. I like Olmo at 4 million. Um, and when I started preparing these slides, I think he was about 17%. Uh, I think that was yesterday or the day before yesterday. And I thought, this is this looks like a differential. Um, and then I started writing out my slides. And he was 20% and he was going up. And then I did a pod with Ben at Dream Team Tonic last night. And I was like, yeah, Olmo differential looks good. And I clicked on him. And he's gone up to 27.5% uh, now. So by the time the deadline comes around, he's probably not going to be a differential anymore. He's, he's sort of trending towards 30% ownership which is pretty crazy they don't usually do this dream team where they adjust the selected by people's draft before the deadline but yeah he looks like he's not going to be much of a differential 38 points overall 19 points and 11 points in his last two both off the bench by the way um, hit maximum bonus against Germany coming off the bench uh, to replace Pedri who got injured in the eighth minute so he probably he basically played a full game with extra time as well uh, one goal, one assist, two shots on target, and a big chance created against Germany. Two shots, uh, two, sorry, two goals, two assists in total. I had your mole, four million, and Williams, four million down. Uh, has fine to hold or good attacking options. But it looks like they're probably going to end up as more differential than Olmo if things carry on. So either of them could be good differentials if you do think that Spain are going to score against France. But that France defence has been really quite impressive. So I'm not really feeling that confident 
about the Spain attack versus France. I know the attack has probably been one of the better attacks of the whole tournament. But that back four of France is just, just so good. With Kunde, Hernandez, Upamakano and Saliba pretty much starting every single game. They look so solid. So I'm not feeling that great. I can see this being another low scoring match. Um, one nil either way, nil nil. Wouldn't be surprised if it's extra time or penalties again. Um, Yamol got his third assist against Germany. Um, I really like him. So third assist, cutting in this time, sort of play it across to Danny Almo for his goal. Um, 63rd minute sub though, a little bit concerning, and they did look a lot worse when they did sub off their sort of attacking players. Um, 6.2 average, eight points in this game. I think Kukurea and Laporte would probably be the, the best defenders if you wanted to back the clean sheet, just because we don't know if it's going to be Navas, Nacho, um, Grimaldo coming in. I imagine it's Na Navas or Nacho. Um, so I think Kukurea and Laporte are probably the best if you're backing the clean sheet, especially because if you do back an, a Navas at 2.5, well, it's good for the one week and it probably does enable a lot of stuff. Carver Howe's coming in for the final if they get there. So you're costing yourself a transfer down the line potentially. But if I if I did go there, Kukurea and Laporte, but Navas at 2.5 does fill a role if you are looking for a differential. And something that I had noticed as well, which I guess makes sense, but when I was struggling for budget myself, I was kind of looking, thinking, oh, I wonder if I could just bring in a dead slot, bring in an eliminated player at 1.5 million or something. But you can't, you can only pick from the players that are left in the tournament, which makes sense. But yeah, if you wanted to bring in a, a rubbish goalkeeper or something to save yourself some budget, you can't do it. So for that reason, Navas at 2.5 is probably a little bit helpful. Portugal, France, nil nil. Absolute snooze fest this match. Um, but France do it again. So a fourth clean sheet from five matches, taking it to extra time and penalties, and then winning on penalties. Um I think the only miss was um, Jao Felix as well. So decent penalties in this one. France have got all players available for this match against Spain. So we're expecting full strength aside from them. There are rumours that Griezmann could possibly be benched for this one. They just can't seem to decide on that sort of extra midfield role. They've, they've played Mbappe off the left. I think they've played Turam, Mouani through the middle. And they've tried Dembele on the right. They've done Griezmann on the right. Just can't seem to fully decide. Um, and they like to go for these extra uh, centre defence midfield style players with Camavinga, too many Pante. So starting all three in this last match. And obviously um, they do like Rabio as well. So a very defensive looking lineup. I'm expecting again from France. Um, but it's working. So just, well, kept four clean sheets, which is the most. Um, but I have only scored those three goals from open play. So feeling really good about the defence of France, but not so much of attack. We've got Mbappe, but then I find it's really hard to choose a midfield or a second attacker. And they're not cheap either. So it's not like you can just take a punt on a cheap one. And if they come on as a sub, it's not the end of the world. Even the likes of Moani and Tram are both sort of 4 million upwards. So I think for that price, you'd rather just get a defender, go for Kunde. You know he's going to start, go for Hernandez at five um, because you don't want to pay for a Griezmann and have him benched, I think. So I'm going to say just Mbappe is the obvious guy to target, but everyone has him at this point. Um, he hasn't looked great wearing this mask. Um, I can't remember if it was a, a volley or it's some came off. Bernardo Silva, I remember it coming off Bernardo Silva, hitting Mbappe straight in the mask. And then he seemed to struggle from after then. His eyes were sort of streaming. He took the mask off um, and he even sort of got subbed off in extra time, which you would have expected him to be one of the penalty takers. But then you saw him on the bench, I think ice in his nose, uh, ice in his face. So he really was struggling after that. Um, he's had back-to-back -back blanks now. So no goals, no assists in his last two. But he is still getting bonus and shot on target points. And it seems like, compared to some of the other strikers, if he doesn't deliver, he still manages to get these five points, usually because of bonus or shots on target. So we're going to be keeping Mbappe for this week. 
um, is a likely holder. Obviously, on penalties as well. Um, and even though he's struggling, I don't see him missing out. He'll try and play. Um, would I captain him though? That's that is another question. So if I was leading in mini leagues, which I'm not, um, or doing really well in the overall rankings, which I'm also not, I I would captain him. I think for this week, I think if I was up there. I'd go safe and go and Bappe captain. But if not, it's time for a differential, I think. So up next, targets for France. Um, Terry Hernandez, 5 million, leads the way as the top defender in the game with 45 points from five matches. Nine point average. He's been hitting bonus every game. He usually gets tackles. And if he doesn't get tackles, he seems to get a big chance created or a shot. He's on two shots on target, one big chance created from these five matches. And I think I'd be shocked at this point if he comes away from this tournament without an attack in return. Surely it's due. So I really like him for this. Um, and I really like the double up of him and Kunde on the right hand side. So where they do play sort of three um, CDMs, depending on whether they play wingers or they kind of go to that sort of diamond with the two strikers. Hernandez and Kunde seem to be the guys that are giving the mo most width for France. So I like both of them at fullback. Couldn't they 4 million? Second highest defender at France with 38 points and the fourth overall defender in the game. 7.6 average. And we did get an assist for one of those own goals in the Belgium match. Um, I quite like the, the block of France if I was chasing, um, but I've played around with it and where they are quite expensive, you've got to sacrifice elsewhere. So it does make it hard. But if you can get to a France block, I, I really do like that. I've got no problem with that. Um, but it is a bit difficult on budget. Um, and like I said, I, I just avoid the, the extra attacking slot with the uncertainty on, is it Dembele? Is it Griezmann? Is it Mouane? Is it Chiram? I probably would just pass on that one. England, Switzerland. So England had the sort of change of formation with three at the back. Um, sometimes it did look like a, a different formation. Other times where it was sort of the exact same personnel, apart from Gehi switched with Konza. Um, it, at times it did look quite similar, but we had Saka, the biggest sort of benefit of playing this formation, um, done a real shift coming back and helping support the defence, but also getting forward, obviously getting that goal, 13 points for him. Trippier actually played a lot, lot higher. So, I mean, you could see what they were trying to do, but I still don't think he played particularly well in that role. Um, but England were improved in this match, um, and I expect it to be pretty much the same again for the next match. But other than just Konza, back to Gahey, I think. Gahey didn't do anything wrong other than get suspended. Konza had a good game, um, but yeah, I, I don't see any reason that Gehi would be left out. So I think they're probably going to stick with the same lineup, but Konza back out for Gehi. Um, Saka, like I said, biggest positive from that 13 points, three bonus points, one shot on target, three tackles. Really, really good match for him. I wasn't, I went for the punt and I'll come to my team in a minute, but I went for the punt on Foden, which I know sounds a bit daft, but I'm chasing and I wanted a differential. And it was kind of between Saka and Foden. But when I did hear that they were going to go to a three at the back, which came out sort of before the deadline, I assumed that that would mean Saka left wing back. And I thought they might go either Trippy or right wing back or even Trent. So I thought Saka left wing back probably was a worse option than Foden maybe playing a little bit more in his usual sort of 10 position behind the striker with Bellingham. Um, but still, Saka much, much better than Foden in that match. Um, so I am interested in Saka for this week. Um, England's only one win in normal time in the tournament. Again, a little bit like France. We're just somehow just finding a way to get ourselves to this semi-final. And I do, like I said, I do think we will get through this one against Netherlands. I'm feeling fairly confident. Uh, two clean sheets from five matches. We're a fairly solid defence, not on France's level. Um, just one big chance um, conceded in this match against Switzerland, obviously for the goal. Um, so defence, still willing to back the England defence. I've got Pickford in goal. 
Um, and I haven't ruled out going for a second. I I quite fancy going against the Netherlands in this one. Um, I know if you are in a position where you are top of your mini leagues or, like I said, top, quite towards the top of the leaderboard, I'd spread it. I'd spread the I'd hit, sort of hedge your bets and go for a little bit of each team just in case you can fill the full 11 in the final that way if you did go for like three of each or two of one team. But if you are looking to go heavy on sort of one side and then take the chance, I'd, I would back England over the Netherlands. And I quite like the matchup. Of, I know Gakpo has been brilliant. He's really highly owned um, and he's someone that I would be saying to target. If I had to look at sort of matchups, Gakpo versus Walker slash Saka in the sort of right wing back or right back position. I do think that's a, a good matchup for England. Um, Walker, a great one-on-one -on -one defender, hasn't had the best tournament. Um, and then Saka coming back to support him as well. I do I do quite like that matchup. And then Aki doesn't offer that much going forward to sort of support Gakpo. So I, I like that. I like that um, partnership for England to match up against Gakpo. Kane, 7.5 million. So he's been underwhelming. Two goals, 5.4 average. Just a one bonus all tournament, four shots on target. So for context, Mbappe's had five shots on target in a match. Um, so quite a way behind in actual chances. Um, he is another captaincy option, but he's not really done it for me. I think I've captained him twice now and been unsuccessful. I know he scored two goals, but I didn't manage to catch those. Um, I think I'd still back Mbappe over Kane as the captain, I think. Um, but 51% owned, he's still... If you do go against Kane, totally, not, not so much for the armband, but if you do go against Kane, it is still worrying. I'd had to toyed with the idea, and I don't particularly like it. But like I said, I'll come on to my thinking at the end. Uh, Bellingham, Bellingham, 6 million, so 66% ownership, so higher than Harry Kane. He's the highest scoring England player, though, nine bonus points, two goals. Um, and again, he was just only one player performance mark from three bonus. Um, so it does fare pretty well, even when he's not getting attacking returns um, by comparison to like a Kane who played 109 minutes and got two points in this one. Uh, if I was looking for a differential, like I said, Saka, I've got Foden. I mean, Foden would be the, the bigger differential, 15% owned, but he hasn't delivered at all yet. 3.4 average. He's had a few chances, which he's had two offside goals ruled out now. Um, but overall, I think Saka has looked a lot more consistent. So Saka or Foden, both decent differentials. I've got my own maybe having that double up of both of them, which is difficult to get to, but we'll, we'll come on to it. Um, and I sort of skipped over the defence. I, I like the look of the England defence for this one. Um, and if I was to go defence, I think Stones and Walker would be sort of my my preferred. But Gahey, 3 million at that price, this late in the tournament with these good teams, 3 million is a really nice price. Um, so I like Gahey. I'm probably going to get Gahey back in my team. Trippier and Shaw... That position seems a little bit of a risk now. Trippier always gets subbed early. And then, sure, I wouldn't take the chance on him at this point. So I think Stones or Walker would be my second option with Gahey as my top at the moment from England at the back. Um, Netherlands, so they had their 2-1 win against Turkey. But it wasn't overly convincing. So a good comeback, but showed a bit of vulnerability there. Um, conceded three big chances in the match. Four shots on target for Turkey. So Verbruggen had a lot of saves to make. Um, you also had Ake and Virgil van Dijk had to take yellows to stop what looked like quite promising attacks from Turkey. Um, so showed a bit of weakness there at the back. And then Turkey also hit the post to potentially go sort of 2-0 up. So I think I think England can get at the Netherlands. Maybe I'm getting a little bit too overconfident uh, with England. But I think at this point in the semi-final, you've got to back a team uh, if you are chasing like me. So maybe I'm just psyching myself up to back England when it comes to uh, sorting my team out a little bit. So Gakpo, 4 million. Like I said, I do think this matchup isn't the best for him against Walker and Saka if we do stick to the same. 
Uh, but he is the highest scoring player on the game with 52 points, 58.3% ownership, 10.4 average. So double figures on average every game. Three goals. So he's looking like he's on for the top goal scorer. Maybe unless Harry Kane can turn things around. He's also got one assist and good avenues to points. He's got nine tackles, four big chances created, eight shots on target. Um, so double the amount of shots on target that Harry Kane's had. Uh, but is there that much to be gained by having Gakpo? Probably not at this point. Like I said, if I was at the top, I wouldn't bother taking him out. Um, and if you were at the top or leading or doing quite well in your mini leagues and you didn't have him, I'd still think about having him in. Um, is he captainable? I mean, he is, but if, you, if you're liking the look of this Netherlands win against England or... Netherlands to score against England, and Gakpo has got to be right up there as a captaincy pick, but I'm not backing it for this week. Um, I mean, he was close to scoring in this Turkey match. He was almost on the end of a Dumfries cross, um, but it was put into the own net uh, by Mulder. Um, so still dangerous, but for me, I won't be backing Gakpo as a captain this week. And I might also be taking a chance against going against him in general. Uh, Dumfries, 4 million, uh, sorry, 4.5 million, got an assist for that own goal. Uh, free bonus. This is more like what we expect Dumfries numbers. So playing a bit more advanced um, up against England's weaker side. So I said that Gakpo's got a nice matchup, or sorry, a hard matchup against Walker and Saka. I think Dumfries um, playing on the other side, it's probably got England's worst side to play against. So he's got likes of Trippier. Um, and you could you could say Foden, but he's been sort of switching it up a little bit. But that Trippier side has been England's weakness. Uh, so I do expect Dumfries to cause some problems down that side. And he's still only 7% owned, so he would be a differential. Uh, done well for me this week. Um, but just depends if you want to back this Netherlands clean sheet. Um, De Vrij, 3 million. Again, like a bit like Kukurea or um, Gehi. It's probably one of the sort of cheaper good value defenders around at this point in the tournament. Bargain price. Uh, I still prefer Ake and Virgil above him, but if budget is needed, he's definitely a good option. Um, and then a few more differentials. So Depay at 3.5 million. I hadn't been convinced by him so far this tournament, but he did get an assist. Nine points against Turkey. Hit bonus. He was really close to getting three bonus, so seven PPM. Um, and a really busy game, so Two big chances created on all set pieces and corners. Um, and I've heard talk they could also be on penalties. Um, I know the pre-tournament talk was Virgil, but he could still take penalties to pie. And then Xavi Simons, 4 million, 12.4% owned. Just the one point against Turkey, 4.6 average and three assists in the tournament. Um, but the fact that he's only had one point against his, against his Turkey side might be something that keeps him as a differential this week while everyone sort of goes for the likes of Olmo, maybe Saka, who's done well in the week prior. Maybe Simons could go under the radar. If you found that useful, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Let's have a look at my team from last week. So absolutely rubbish. 41 points for the game week. I'm on 321 points total. And that rounds off three red arrows in a row. So Three match days ago, I was 6.2k. I dropped down to 34k. And now I found myself at 57k this week. So, yeah, absolutely shocking. Um, yeah, having a bad time. Having a bad time on this Euros game. So, I did Ake, Dumfries and Gakpo in this week. Um, ahead of the Turkey match, I did like the look of the Netherlands for that one. Uh, and I needed a few more players on the right-hand side of the draw. I also brought back Harry Kane um, after he scored. Kane and Bellingham really hurt my rank that week that they both went off. So I felt like I needed to have one of them. I brought Kane back in, obviously, on penalties. And then the thing I was going to do was bring Bellingham straight back in. But at the point where everyone had Kane and Bellingham, and I was already sort of in free fall with my rank, I felt like I had to do something a little bit different. So. Rather than go Bellingham and Kane, I opted to go, well, I was even going to go Saka or Foden. 
Um, the talk of the Saka wing back thing sort of put me off Saka, and I thought Foden. There's a chance that he could play a bit better in that more advanced role, and I think he did. I think he did look better, but it didn't turn out in terms of points. He got three points versus Bellingham's four, so no better off on points there. Uh, but I do think I have to have a differential in there, so I'm happy to keep Foden. Um, so that was Gahey removed for me because he was suspended. Sabitzer was eliminated, um, and then Bruno, Fernandez, Ronaldo, I took out because I didn't fancy them scoring against France, which he didn't, and then Morata. Um, yeah, I was just sick of him. So I got him out of my team and he didn't do anything either. Um, but now this week, so I've currently got Pickford in goal. Fine, nothing wrong with keeping Pickford. Carver Howell suspended. So he has to be removed. Um, and I've then got Dumfries, who got eight points in that assist, which was good. Kukure got me five, which was some bonus points thrown in there, which I Obviously, I was frustrated to lose the clean sheet in the 89th, but five points isn't terrible. And then Ake with a one-pointer, not great. Midfield, Ruiz, he's had a great tournament. I've got Musiala, who got the five points but got eliminated. Foden, I said he's my differential. I kind of want to keep him. And I've got that template front three of Gakpo and Bappe. And I captained Kane for this uh, match. But again, I seem to miss... All of the captain halls this this tournament. Um, I've not had one goal from a captain um, this tournament, apart from when I played Max captain and it went to Gundogan. But I've not had one attacking return from a captain. Um, it's not even like I've captained anyone crazy. I, I've I think I did Lukaku twice um, for those disallowed goals. I think I've done Mbappe once and he didn't deliver. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was Kane twice and missed missed both of his goals. So not happened for me at all with these captain picks, and it's probably reflected in my rank a bit here. Um, just just keep dodging goals, keep dodging clean sheets. So, yeah, not looking good. So what are we going to do about it for this game week? So Carver has got to go. I'm not feeling great about the Dutch... Defence, which having two already, the, the the thing would be just to keep them. But I kind of did that with Spain. I, I fancied the France clean sheet more than the Spain clean sheet last week. But I already had, I think, one Spain defender in there. So I, I sort of kept with it. If I had to guess, I, I would back, be back in this week. I'd be back in France and England to win. And I think I prefer France and England for the clean sheet as well this week. Out of the two, I probably prefer France at the back. And then if I had to decide who I think scores more goals this week, I fancy England to score against the Netherlands more than I, I fancy goals in that France-Spain game. It's just, France just seemed to make a... Real horrible slog out of any match at the moment. So I can see that one being tight. Whereas that Turkey-Netherlands match sort of seemed to have a lot of chances for Turkey. So I think I'm going to try and back England for the attack in this one. But here's a couple drafts that I was sort of looking at and things that I was trying to decide on. Um, but bear in mind, I'm struggling now for rank. I'm struggling in mini league. So I'm going to go more differential. Um, this is probably not the way you're going to want to go if you're having a decent tournament. So if budget wasn't an option, this is where my starting point was. So if budget was no problem at all, I'd probably remove my full defence of Spain and Netherlands and go all in on France. But I also want Saka. I really want Saka this week as a differential. And I've got Foden already. Um, but I want another differential attacker as I'm chasing. The problem is, the England differentials are so expensive in Saka and Foden, 6.5, 6.5, so more than Bellingham. I did look at maybe doing a Spain differential in midfield, but then I'm saying that I think France is going to keep a clean sheet. So for it to pay off, I'd have to have the Spain midfielder score against the France defender, which seems counterintuitive, really. So if I was to play a perfect back line of France and then Saka, Foden, 
thrown in looks great but it's it's four million pounds over budget even with this extra three million so it's never happening uh, i could go gehi over hernandez would save me two million and then i i could also drop one of them slots to to navas um but then do i want to lose hernandez the best player in that france defense that gets bonus all the time looks the best for attacking returns i, I want to have him in there uh, so it didn't quite work out. That's I could have done that. So had Upa Meccano, Kunde, Navas, Gehi, and then Saka in the midfield. It didn't look terrible. Um, there are question marks whether we think Navas starts or not, but I think you've got to just accept that for 2.5. I mean, and Gehi does give you the extra budget, but losing Hernandez is a big miss. Um, it allows me to keep the big three up front, so I don't have to lose Kane, but I want Hernandez. Other option. So could have Hernandez, Kunde, and Upamakano, and then Gehi at the back, but then sacrifice Saka for Olmo, who looked really good, getting bonus, two goals, two assists. But do I want to compromise on Saka? Not really. Do I want to back Olmo versus my free France at the back? Not really. So I didn't think this one looked that great either. Um, other option could have been keeping Kukurea at the back and then dropping out Harry Kane to save myself a bit of budget. I could get the two France defenders that I like. So Hernandez and Kunde um, gives me double France, double England at the back and then Kukurea. Uh, but then losing Kane, I do have Saka, Foden, Bellingham. So Bellingham would be the cover for Kane if he went off he's more highly owned than Kane but just you just feel like Kane even though he's been poor he has got that goal in him still he could be on penalties well he is on penalties if we get one I don't mind this one but again it feels like I wouldn't be surprised if Kane braced if I thought England were going to score goals you wouldn't be that surprised if Kane braced I don't mind this option does give me the France, gives me the England at the back. Do have to stick a Spain defender in there, which is not the end of the world, um, but it's losing Kane is the big pain point, this one. So this is the 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 third thing that I've come up with and, and the thing I think that I like the most. So it's five at the back, which I never thought I'd be doing at this point, um, but I feel a bit better at this with this draft so it lets me have a few different things that i wanted so it allows me to keep kane it allows me to keep bakayo saka but the sacrifice well sorry and it also lets me get the double france defense the double england defense but the sacrifice is gakpo who's highly owned could also punish me but I feel like if I'm chasing, I need to back a certain horse at some point and stop spreading the risk out now. Um, and I think if I'm back in England, I'm back in England. I also said I quite like the Saka Walker thing up against Gakpo. So I feel like it's more likely that Gakpo is kept quiet than Harry Kane. I'm more worried about Kane not having Kane and I am not having Gakpo, I think, at this point. So this allows me to have the, the double differential sack of Foden and Kane up top. It lets me have Pickford and Gahey. So having the England two defenders or defender and goalkeeper would work. If, if Gakpo didn't score and England kept the clean sheet, I'd have the two defenders and I've not missed out on Gakpo. So I'm back in England fully for this draft. I get my two France defenders in Kunde Hernandez and Hena the two best ones as well. But the, the thing that has to sort of make make way um, would be I keep Kukurea and I keep Navas. Well, I bring in Navas at 2.5 million, which I'm not overly keen on it. I'm not certain that he starts. I think he will. But I wouldn't be surprised if they tried something different. But at 2.5, do, do you just take it? Um, maybe he gets an early sub. Best case scenario, another nil-nil. 
Portugal, France, nil nil, extra time. If you can get that and it goes to penalties, then you could end up with your France clean sheet double and Spain clean sheet double potentially. Um, so I, I never thought I'd be going five at the back, but out of all the sort of drafts I've played around with, I think I like the look of this one the most. Uh, Pickford in goal, Navas Kukurea, Kunde Hernandez, Pickford Gehi. So I've got double up on three of the four teams remaining. Two for England, two for France, two for Spain. Midfielder, Ruiz, there's nothing wrong with keeping him. I get the two differentials in Foden, Saka. And then I have Mbappe, Kane up top, the two penalty takers. Uh, but I do sacrifice Cody Gakpo. Uh, but I have to do something different at this point. Which leads me to the captaincy. I don't think there's any ground to be made with having Gakpo, Mbappe, Kane. Whichever one I've picked out of the big hitters up front, I've picked the wrong one so far this tournament. So... I think it's time to go differential on the captaincy as well and try and make up some ground. Um, can't get much worse than it is at the moment. I wouldn't recommend anyone else do it. But if I was to go differential, it'd probably be between Foden and Saka. Like I said, I think there's probably more goals in this match than the other one. And I think on form, it has to be Saka. I think he seems to be better for the bonus points. Um, he's shown that he still gets forward in this wing back position. Um, he's probably going to do better for tackles than Foden would um, by having to put in a defensive shift. So I think all around Saka probably just looks the more reliable for points. If either of them score, brilliant. Um, I've got a differential scoring in my midfield, but I think I'm going to back Saka for the, for the captaincy this week, uh, which is unlike me. I don't really do much in the way of differentials that often, but needs must in the semi-final of this European fantasy football tournament so yeah looking at it it's looking odd but i've got to do something different let me know what you're doing this week how you're getting on so far in the euros i'm sure you're doing better than me um, please do leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're not already and go to the dream team tonic podcast we recorded live with our patron members last night myself and ben uh, that one is out now for everyone on youtube and your podcast platforms so Get that in your ears before today's deadline. The deadline is 7 p.m. today, so Tuesday, ahead of that France-Spain clash. Good luck, everyone. See you on the next episode, which will be the final, I'm guessing. So, yeah, good luck and see you on the next one. Goodbye.